Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to install the CBI Astute plug outlet. I'm going to be installing this in place of that one. And the feature of the Astute system, it allows me to control the output over here, which means that if I do not want the output to be on, or if I want to limit the power that is fed to the unit, I can use the Astute system, which is what I'm going to be doing in this installation. For example, this outlet over here is in a scullery by a kitchen, and this plug over here is feeding a dishwasher. Here is the dishwasher and maybe you want to limit the output that is fed to the load. In this case it's a dishwasher. Maybe you're running on your inverter batteries or there was an outage and you don't want to be feeding heavy loads at a certain time. So I can use the astute system to control that. Right the first thing is to go and turn off the mains. That means I need to drop the earth leakage circuit breaker and disconnect the circuit. Now that the power that feeds the outlet is off, I can now open this. Now just a note, there is already a crack there and there. I did not crack it. I'm just swapping the outlets now. So this particular outlet requires me to remove the two screws. Right, so I've taken the faceplate off. Now there are two long screws over here which I can remove. Now it's always good practice to quickly do a voltage measurement here. I'm measuring to see if there is any voltage present on the outlet over here. And look at that, there is 233 volts here, which means that the person did not switch off the supply. So always take a measurement just to confirm that the supply is offline. I'm going to now check why the power is not offline. Here I've now checked that it is now finally offline. I'm getting less than one volt and I can proceed to disconnect the wires. Right, so in this case, it's just a flat screwdriver. I'm removing the wires. Notice there are two live wires here. And the reason for this is that the outlets are daisy chained. Because just nearby, there is another plug outlet. And that is why there are two lives there because they are running the lives in a chain. Now I remove the neutral. And then I remove the earth. And notice this outlet had a faceplate and then a backing. Now the astute version is a little bit different. So I just need to open these two sides here. I just put my nail there and pulled it open and this side over there. And then there are four screws which I now need to remove. Before installing the unit, I need to make sure that the size is correct. Because you might notice on the side here, there is quite a large block here. While on this regular outlet, it is quite flat and it is smaller. Now when I look in the side here, I can see that I might be running into some trouble here because this is quite high and there's some cement here in the way. So all I'm going to do now is just check that this would fit in here. So I can just fold these wires inside. They are completely off. The earth leakage is down, so it doesn't matter if they touch anything at this point. So unfortunately, I have a problem. It is a bit out on this side, so I have to remove some of the cement. Now you can use a hammer and a chisel. Just be careful not to damage any of the tiles, and please note that there's already a crack there and there, which is not me. Now, if you haven't got a chisel, you can use a screwdriver. Some screwdrivers have a metal backing, which you can hammer on. Right, so I've now made some space. There you can see the cement. Right, so now it is flush on the tiles and I can continue with the insulation. Right, I have the back of the unit now. There's the neutral, there's the earth, there's the life. Now over here I have the live and there are two wires that have been joined together. Yours might just be a single wire or it might be a double like this. Most important thing is to just first inspect the wires. I'm looking to see if there are any nicks in the wire. A nick is like a groove that will weaken the wire and when it's moved a bit or bent, the strands tend to break off. So I'm checking the condition of the wire and in this case, both these wires are fine. Now both of these wires need to be inserted into the hole. For best results, rather use a bootlace connector or crimp them and then insert the crimped wire into the hole. However, if you don't have a ferrule or a bootlace connector, you can twist them with pliers. Now I've got to be very careful here because I'm not twisting it very tight. Now I've only twisted it about three times and the reason for that is if I twist it too much it actually weakens the wire and it tends to break. I also do not want to nick the wire and often if I make it too tight I tend to nick the wire and the wire gets deformed and it tends to break. That one is ready to be inserted in the hole. I have the neutral over here which I'm going to do the same thing. 
Now what I want to do is I want to see how deep the hole is. The reason for that is different manufacturers have different recesses, meaning I need to know how much of the wire is going to go in the hole. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking my lead or you could take a screw or whatever else you have and I'm just measuring how far it went in the hole. So in this case, it went exactly one centimeter. Now, the reason I'm doing that is if you have a look at this neutral wire, for example, it is one and a half centimeters long. That means if I put this in the hole, we're going to see half a centimeter of exposed copper because it means it's going to look like that. And that is not good. I don't want to have that much exposed copper. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure to one centimeter and just cut off the rest. Right, I did the same with the live. I first determine the orientation and then I wire the back. The reason being is if, if I just wire it and then I flip it and realize it was the wrong way around, then I have to turn it. And when I turn it, it might put unnecessary pressure on these wires. So I've got the orientation and now I can wire it. Right, I've done the live, the neutral, and I just need to put in the earth. Right, I've already inserted the wires, but what I do is I go around one more time because the copper often seats and then it allows me to tighten it a little bit more. Right, I do a quick check. L for live, E for earth, N for neutral. I can now close this up. Right, now I need to use either the screws that were provided or the screws that were already in place. Now these screws have to be threaded into these holes. Now this is quite deep, as you might see. That's quite a long travel. You might find on some other boxes, you might even have screws that are this long. So best is to just determine beforehand which screw is going to be right. Now I'm going to use the ones that were already there. And unfortunately, there were only two. Best practice is to use four, but in this case, two will suffice. Now, before I push this in the box, I just want to check inside if the wires are going to be able to sit neatly. I don't want the wires to be cut on any exposed metal. For example, sometimes these boxes have sharp edges, just like here, there's a sharp edge here. So when I push this inside here, I don't want the conductors to scratch and deteriorate the insulation here. So what I'm doing is I'm actually feeding them in with my hand. I'm, I'm actually curling them. Right. So now I'm ready to insert the screw. I insert the one at the bottom first. And the reason I insert the one at the bottom first is only because I can see over here where it's going. If you can see better by inserting the one on the top first, that's fine. Now I just tighten it just a little bit. I don't have to tighten it all the way. I just want to make sure that this is in place. Now I do the top screw. Now what I'm looking out for is I don't want the screw to go through and pierce any of these conductors. So what I'm going to do now is I'm getting the screw aligned, but I'm moving the wires down. I'm checking here, I'm peeking inside here. I don't want there to be a loop of the wire where possibly the screw is going to damage. So I'm checking here and there's no wire in the way and I can screw it in. It's helpful if you take a torch on the side and just look and see where that screw is aligning to. If you're having a lot of trouble, just make sure the screw can actually get into the hole. And what I'm doing is I'm just threading the screw a little bit in. Right, so I've ascertained that the screw can definitely get into the box. Right, so that one and that one have both caught on the box. So I need to tighten these, but before I do, I just need to peek inside just to make doubly sure that I'm not screwing into any wires or pushing on the wires. Right, I've just looked through the side and I'm all clear. I can seat that now and finally screw it in. Now, as you can see, it's still too loose, so I can make it a bit tighter and I should be using a third or a fourth screw here. So I'm tightening it, but if I tighten it any more, I can see that the package is going to deform. I do not want to deform the package and it is quite tight now. It's not moving easily. Now, if possible, insert your third and fourth screw. In my case, I'll just be using the two screws. I can now return the covers. These covers are unidirectional. This one can go there or there. On some outlets, you might find that there's an insignia here. So you must just check that it's the right way around. It might have the brand's name. So sometimes these are directional. All right, so the outlet is now installed and now I can go turn on the power. Right, so I've now energized the mains, meaning that the live and the neutral at the back here are now energized. But the unit is actually off. And the reason why it's off is there's a little button here which I need to depress. And then there's a little LED here which goes on. Now, I've also plugged in my apparatus. This is my soldering iron and notice it is off. If I want to turn it on, there's a little button on the side here which allows me to turn on my device and then I can turn off my appliance. So there I'm turning it on and there I'm turning it off. 
I'm turning it on and if I want to turn the entire unit off I can then press that button and it turns off everything. Now the purpose of the Astute is to have the remote control function and in this case I have my cell phone and I'm going to demonstrate the setup. So the first thing I need to do is install the app from the Play Store or the App Store. Right, I do a search for CBI Home. This is what the app looks like. I've already installed it and I need to just say open. Now, if this is the first time you're using it, you'll need to sign up. In my case, I've already filled in the registration details, so I'm just going to log in. So I've got a few devices in the list here, but I'm going to add a new device because I've just installed a new outlet. So I'm gonna say add device, and now it's asking me the type of device. In this case, it's called the ASP, which is Astute Plug. And now I must be able to connect to the Wi-Fi in the area. So in this case, I have the password for the Wi-Fi and I'm connecting to the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It must be the 2.4 gigahertz, otherwise it won't work. I now reset the device as follows. I make sure it is turned on. I then power on my device. There you can see my device is on and then I power it off after a few seconds. I now say next and then it says hold the reset button in for five seconds. This is the reset button and I press and hold it for five seconds. Now you'll notice that the LED here is oscillating blue and red. It is now in the pairing mode. I now press next. I confirm it is in the pairing mode, the flashing lights, and I say next. Now I just wait. It will locate the device on the network. This can take up to two minutes. My advice is do not keep the cell phone very close to the outlet. Also, the outlet must be close enough to your Wi-Fi router. It has successfully been installed, and in this case, I've renamed it as Kitchen Outlet. If you wanna see how to rename it, you just tap on the pen icon, and then you can just rename it. I'm calling it Kitchen Outlet. Right, done. Right, so here is the interface, and I can now control the device remotely. Right, just showing that it's working, I can now turn on my device, my appliance, using my phone. There we can see that my soldering iron has been turned on. Right, you can configure many programs for this outlet. For example, you can set timers. If you want to set rules about when this outlet can go in the on position, you can set that. You can also set when it goes off. For example, if you're having load shedding and you don't want someone to be using an iron or a dishwasher or a washing machine at that time because it'll be running on battery, say for example, you can set that this outlet is in the off position for certain hours. I have a detailed video showing how to do all the programming using the CBI app, but I am just going to show one aspect and that is the electric. Right, I've plugged in a kettle to just demonstrate one of the features of the Astute app. On my phone, I can see that the power is 1.8 kilowatts, 1,815 watts with a current of 8.2. Now, if I want to limit the current, what I need to do is set a scene. So I'm going to quickly switch off the kettle and I'm going to go here at the bottom where it says scene. Right, so I say create a scene. It's asking me which type of scene. I'm just going to choose this one which says when device status changes. The increase in power output is a device status change. I'm going to choose the kitchen outlet because that is the outlet I'm using. And then it's asking me power, voltage, current. And in this case, I'm going to say power. It is now setting a rule that if over 500 watts is being outputted through the outlet, it must cut out. So it says less than, equal to, or more than. I'm going to the more than or the greater than, and then I say next. We've got an if then statement here. If more than 500 watts is being outputted to my appliance, then what? So I'm gonna add a task by saying plus, and then it says here, run the device. Yes, I'm gonna run the device. Which one? It's the kitchen outlet, and then I'm going to counter, and then I'm saying off. So this will turn the device off. So I can say next, and then I can say save. Do I wanna run the scene now? Yes. So this has now set a rule. Right, so somebody comes to the outlet, plugs in the kettle and switches it on. Notice the app updates telling me that it's switched on and watch what will happen. The unit automatically cuts out the kettle because it exceeded the 500 watts. Because if I go to electric and I try and do that again, the person tries to switch on the kettle again, notice that the current will increase the app identifies that and then it cuts it off because it exceeds the 500 watts that I had set. So that means that the person can carry on using the outlet as long as the appliance is less than 500 watts. There are many other scenarios that you can program into the system. This is just to get you started. Please check out my other tutorial videos on this topic. Thanks for watching and cheers.